Hi, this is Kerry, here with a review of The Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle by Lucy Cavendish and with artwork by Selina Fenich. It's a deck and book set which comes with 47 cards and a very large book. Um, as you can see, it's sizeable and also quite thick and detailed. It has the first 30 or so pages give a discussion about who the fairies are, how to work with them, and how to communicate and heal. It also gives a number of different spreads to use with this deck. talks a little bit about beliefs, and in particular, it sort of suggests that fairies aren't dangerous to work with, that that was an idea propagated by the church. There's also a nice section where she talks about the different times of the moon cycle and what they're best to use for different magics, uh, the different times of day, and also about the wheel of the year. There's a little discussion of different symbols and the different realms of fairy, so giving a fairly detailed synopsis, shall we say, of different fairy lore from around the world, I guess. Questions to ask of the fairies and what the reversals mean, as well as, as I say, three different readings, a seven card one, a five card one, and a three card one. The rest of the book, which is very beautifully presented, shows scans of the cards, as well as having other images, and gives a basic explanation of the card, as well as divinatory meanings and reversed meanings. It's very nicely put together and well written. Some people might consider it to be slightly fluffy, but I'd say overall it is quite a good mix of realism, how to work magic, how to connect with the fairies, and also, I guess, just what to expect from this and what we need to put in. Lucy Cavendish is a white witch and very strong, shall we say, on environmentalism and responsibility for ourselves as well as for the world. So overall, it's an interesting book and well written. And as I say, there's plenty to it and it's very nicely presented. Moving on, let's take a look at all of the cards. The majority of the cards are quite feminine very beautiful, quite welcoming, with bright colours and a lot of young females. However, there are also a fair number of cards in this deck that have male characters as well. There's 47 cards total and 18 of those have male figures of one sort or another. We have these more romantic young fairy figures and then we also have quite a few gnomes of different ages and aspects. And some of these cards aren't quite as pretty, that they have a slightly darker element with these gnomes in behind them, or particularly this one where it looks like the gnomes are coming to take her away. There are also a few cards that are simply of male figures, from the very young to the more dashing, heroic and romantic, and even one old figure of the Merlin. There are also a number of cards where we mainly have a female figure, but if you see there's a green man within this, and I actually find these, this one's almost more of a gargoyle than a green man, but nevertheless, for me, they do represent a masculine element within this deck. 
some of them, as you can see, more than others. And I think that's quite a strong influence and one that I find very positive, giving this deck more of a balanced feeling. It isn't just a girly deck, it does have that masculine aspect. It also invites us through portals and doorways, welcoming us into the land of fairy. The great majority of the cards, though, are of female figures. Some of them with different animals and insects, so plenty of butterflies, and here we have a little bunny rabbit, birds. All of the cards are very beautifully created, and most of them are quite colourful as well. We have unicorns and flowers, and also a cute little snail. There are a couple of cards which are done in black and white emphasising darker aspects, sadder aspects perhaps. And there's also, as I say, a quite strong influence from the aspects of the moon. Each card also, as you can see, has a number at the top so that you can easily find it in the guidebook, the name of the fairy, and then a number of key words which help with the interpretation or understanding. But I also find that just the images themselves do speak quite clearly. There's a fair bit of symbolism in them. And here we have ones which are more either natural plant environments or slightly more rocky, crystalline and even built environments. It's a beautiful deck which I really enjoy working with. I found it very positive and helpful for meditations and really enjoyed its wisdom and its balance. Blessed be.